Good afternoon, my name is Kimberly James and we're not in lockdown, I am the Collections and Marketing Manager at Gilbert White and the Oates Collections. This afternoon I'm going to give you a little insight into the friendship between Gilbert White and Hester Chapone in this, the 300th anniversary year of Gilbert White's birth. Before we begin, I thought that we could take a moment just to introduce the two characters that I will be talking about. So, Gilbert White uh, is best known for his work in natural history. He wrote The Natural History and Antiquities of Selborne, which was first published in 1789 and has never been out of print since. The book is made up of letters from Gilbert to two real correspondents and fellow naturalists, detailing the flora and fauna of Selborne and its surroundings. Hester Chapone is best known for her conduct book, Letters on the Improvement of the Mind, published in 1773, which promoted the study of a wide range of subjects and encouraged rational thinking for young women. The book was celebrated by the likes of Mary Wollstonecraft and became a staple part of young women's education in the late 18th and early 19th century. So how did they meet? Well, um, it all started when Gilbert White um, attended Oriel College, Oxford, where he befriended John Molso. Um, the two were very different. John Molso came from the landed gentry. He was the nephew of the future Bishop of um, Winchester. Gilbert, on the other hand, was the eldest son of an out-of-work barrister. Um, his mother had just died and he had seven younger siblings back at home in Selborne. Um, the two were both destined for the church and struck up a really strong, firm um, friendship, which is chronicled in the letters from John to Gilbert, uh, really from their 20s all the way through to their 70s, which is a, an amazing insight into um, Gilbert White's personal life, which otherwise we wouldn't necessarily um, get. Um, so in 1745, John brought his new best friend um, home to meet his family. His family were all um, unanimously impressed with um, Gilbert, which included John's 18-year-old sister, Hester, the future Mrs Chapone. Um, in one of the very early letters that um, John Molso wrote to Gilbert White, he writes Heck, who was one of Hester's many um, nicknames. Heck liked your hair. She confesses so much already. It was a very neat compliment that you sent her. She can't answer it, so she says nothing. Hester Molso um, had grown up with um, none of the um, advantages that her brothers had. Hester was extremely intelligent, but like most women, had had barely an education. Um, and it seems like the only real um, fiction that she was per permitted to read um, were romances, which is something that you really see her lambast in her future writing. Um, it's clear from the beginning that Hester and Gilbert hit it off right away, even despite their seven year age gap. Um, they had many likes and dislikes in common, and John is always sure to mention Hester to Gilbert in his letters, hinting at the quite close relationship between the three of them. So fast forward six years, 1751, a lot had changed for the two of them. Um, Gilbert at this point was trying to pursue a career at Oriel College in Oxford and with mixed success. Um, and back at Selborne, he had just started his famous garden calendar, um, the first of his diaries, which he would keep from this point um, right up until his um, death, chronicling basically half of his life. Um, Hester's life had changed a lot. Her, her mother had died, which had um, meant that she had new responsibilities, but also a lot more freedom. She was living in London now. Um, she had started to um, write and was now had the full scope of um, choice to read whatever she um, liked. It was also at this time that she befriended Elizabeth Carter. 
um, who introduced Hester into literary society. In 1750, Hester was introduced to Samuel Richardson and the two entered into a written debate on filial duty. Hester complained of Richardson's notion in his novel Clarissa um, that the heroine's mistake is to disobey her father, which eventually leads to tragedy. Hester argued against having to blindly obey tyrannical parental authority. So, at this point, John Molso um, narrates the debate to Gilbert White um, as if it were a tennis match. So he writes in his letter, the first letter was long. Mr. Richardson's answer, 13 close pages. Hex reply, 17, and Mr. R's, three. This debate was not only to seal a really close friendship between Hester um, and Samuel Richardson, but would also cement her place and reputation amongst the um, London literary elite as both a writer and a critic. And the picture that I am showing you here is of Samuel Richardson at home with the Molso family, including Hester, um, one of her brothers that unfortunately isn't John, um, his wife and some friends, um, which shows how close the Molso family were to Samuel Richardson. In a letter from 1751, uh, John Molso writes to Gilbert White uh, from Hester's dressing room, um, saying, she is reading Clarissa. In the other hand lies your invitation. So what John here is referring to is Gilbert White's poem, um, An Invitation to Selborne, which Gilbert White had started um, quite a few years previously. In fact, um, we get a hint that Gilbert White wrote some of it while staying with the Molsos, um, because John writes in an earlier letter, I fancy my sister sung herself into six lines when you were in town last. Uh, the poem is a um, poetical um, description of Gilbert's um, home and the beauties of the countryside surrounding it um, and seems to be pre presented when it was finished to both John and Hester. Um, in that same letter where John is um, gives that image of Hester reading Clarissa in one hand and um, Gilbert's poem in the other, um, we actually hear from Hester herself as she finishes off um, John's letter. In it she writes, I am so obliged to both the poet and the friend in Mr White's gallant and elegant invitation that I cannot help telling him how much I am mortified that I cannot thank him in person for his admirable poem. Your description of Selborne has left nothing to the craving imagination of Miss Hecky. It was kindly done to send me so lively a picture, as I fear I'm not to see the original. It is no great compliment to say that I wish to accept your invitation, as I write from this suffocating town where I am killed with heat and have no voice or strength. Here, however, I am likely to remain, if I can exist, the great part of the summer, with only the refreshing excursion of a day or two now and then to Mr Richardson's at North End to keep me alive. I shall gratify his vanity and my own by showing him your verses. And I think yours, if you have any, must taste the praises of a Richardson. Pray, give my thanks and compliments to your father and sister for their part of the invitation. I hope your father has not seen more than poetical compliments. For if he has, he must not see me unless he has a turn for poetry and knows that a poet must give the perfection he does not find. When you next drink tea in the pencil nest like bower, pity your obliged, humble servant, yes, papa. So, uh, what Samuel Richardson thought of Gilbert White's poetry, we don't know. Um, Gilbert White certainly isn't remembered for being much of a poet, um, but certainly um, Hester Chapone was a big fan. Um, in this Hester has signed off her letter, Yes Papa, um, which was one of the very many um, nicknames that the family had for her. 
Um, and it's actually through Hester that we learn about two of Gilbert White's nicknames. Um, the first is Busser White, um, which is a name that apparently um, he was known by um, when at university. And I like the idea that um, Hester picked it up um, after hearing um, stories um, from John and Gilbert about um, what they got up to whilst at uni. Um, bus um, is an archaic um, word for to kiss. Um, so there must be quite the story behind the nickname Busser White. Um, John writes in 1749 that Hester, on um, hearing that her trip to Oxford would not um, correlate with Gilbert being there, was in the greatest alarm and screamed out on hearing it, but where is my busser? In short, she is apprehensive of a dearth of civilities, because you are not to be there, and fears she shall not get her degree because she is not her favourite bachelor to answer under. It's because of Hester that we also, um, she coined a um, second nickname for Gilbert White, which was a sort of um, contraction of Bossa White, um, Wittybus. Um, John teases Gilbert White um, by writing in a letter, you best know ye meaning of your new name and whether it is a fond abbreviation of your Oxford title, Bussa. So there's no doubting that the um, relationship between uh, Hester Molso and Gilbert White sometimes felt a little bit flirty. Um, and perhaps it was. Um, but we have to keep in mind that we are seeing the friendship almost exclusively through the eyes of John Molso writing letters to his best friend. John, throughout their lives, constantly teased Gilbert White on his marital status. When he was a student on um, get the possibility of getting married too young and then in later life and not being married too late. Um, so it's likely that John quite enjoyed this um, friendship between his best friend and his sister and liked to um, tease Gilbert um, about it. Um, Hester Molso married the solicitor John Chapone um, in 1760, but unfortunately was widowed only a few months later. Um, Gilbert White uh, never married, and there is a lot of um, guessing about why that was, but it's uh, my personal um, theory is that it was a simple case of him not really coming into um, financial independence until he was well into middle age um, and he just wasn't as interested anymore. Um, instead Gilbert White and Hester Chapone seem to have had a friendship where they shared and encouraged each other's writing. Um, we know that Hester wrote Gilbert a sermon very early in their friendship. We know this because John is um, sort of teasingly outraged that he hasn't seen it and demands um, Gilbert to send him a copy. Um, and we see that um, Gilbert sent Hester translations for her to um, have a look at. Again, we know this because um, in the letter John um, writes, she would not always have you translate and imitate, but give your own invention scope and I hope you observe what she says. As the two grew older, they seem to have remained friends. Um, several of the Molso family, including Hester, um, visited Gilbert White in Selborne. Um, so finally she was able to accept that um, invitation to Selborne. And um, the two seem to have kept in touch right into old age. Um, the evidence of their friendship dries up, unfortunately, in 1791 when John Molso dies, because um, it really is only through John's letters that we see this friendship. In 1773, Hester Chapone published letters on the improvement of the mind addressed to a young lady. The young lady in question was John's daughter, Jane, Hester's niece, 
and in the letters the aunt, keen that her niece should have a better foundation of education than she had received herself, lays down the principles of education she finds important, focusing on rational understanding and the study of sensible and practical subjects. It was an instant bestseller and went through several editions right into the 19th century. The book was commended by contemporaries such as Mary Wollstonecraft and Francis Burney, and it is referred to in Thackeray's Vanity Fair and hinted at in Austin's Mansfield Park. Mrs Chapone became a household name even in inspiring satirical publications based on her work. Her friend Gilbert White must have been really proud. Um, he doesn't seem to mention um, the work in any of his letters, um, but I'm sure that he would have um, made sure that all of his nieces and great nieces, of which there were many, um, would have read the copy. Um, in the year that it was published, John Malso um, tells Gilbert White, my sister Chapone, I have not seen since the great harvest of her fame. She is much gratified by the praises that resound on all sides, and indeed I think fairly I fairly think that she deserves them. Gilbert's life took a similar, if perhaps a little bit more quiet, um, vein. His interest in nature had been apparent since his youth, but as the years wore on, it became more and more part of his life. Um, he was introduced through his London-based brothers to some of the um, eminent naturalists of the day and began decades worth of correspondence with them um, over the 1760s, 70s and 80s on all matters nature. In 1789 he published a selection of these letters called The Natural History and Antiquities of Selborne. The book discussed nature in all its forms as well as describing in detail the idyll of Selborne. So the natural history of Selborne did okay, um, but by 1800 it had still only made one edition. Um, in fact, it wouldn't actually make a second edition until 1802, um, whereas by 1800 Hester Chapone's work had gone through 16 editions. But like um, Chapone, Gilbert White's heyday was actually really the 19th century, um, with his work suddenly being um, recognised for its pioneering, if you would pardon the pun, nature. Um, it quickly um, became a staple of any Regency or Victorian bookshelf, um, inspiring future natural um, Scientists such as um, Charles Darwin, who very much saw himself as standing on the shoulders of Gilbert White in terms of understanding the natural world. Um, it was also a book that really opened up the natural world to the general public and was a very popular um, way for people to um, engage with natural history. Um, Charlotte Bronte, for example, in one of her letters to Ellen Nassi, um, recommends reading um, White's Selborne, as it was commonly abbreviated to, um, if she wanted to read natural history. Gilbert White didn't live to see his own success. He died in 1793, um, four years after the book had been um, published, just a few weeks shy of his 73rd birthday. Hester Chapone died in 1801, aged 74. Hester Chapone and Gilbert White are an unlikely pairing. One was an eminent blue stocking um, in the centre of um, the literary um, elite, a published writer from a young age um, who championed um, women, women's rights to better education. Um, the other was a country parson who, um, whose obsession with the natural world um, made him and the village that he lived in um, a household name um, long after his death. However, they were kindred spirits um, in the way that they were both fun, sociable, uh, people who both delighted 
um, in the written word and really supported each other's um, writing pursuits. Um, but the person really that um, is key in all of this is John Molso. Um, John Molso um, grew up to be a parson. He was um, the vicar of very many different um, places across the country. He um, lived a quiet life. He became an old man um, long before his um, time. Um, but it's because of this friendship that he had with Gilbert White um, and the relationship that he had with his sister that chronicled this really interesting, well I think so, um, friendship between these two rather unlikely um, 18th century um, figures um, in his um, letters to his best friend Gilbert. So that's my little insight into um, the friendship between Hester Chapone and Gilbert Wyatt. Um, I really, really hope that um, it's inspired you to learn a little bit more about Gilbert White or about Hester Chapone. And um, once lockdown's lifted, it would be great um, if you would like to come to see Gilbert White Selborne um, whilst you're visiting um, Chawton. Um, thank you very much.